Good morning, students. Hope all of you are keeping fine at the home. Okay. Once again, let us continue with our English classes. I hope you are following all the classes, doing the homeworks what is given to you. Am I right? Make sure complete all the homeworks and come ready for the new classes so that you will be able to understand the continuation of the classes. Okay, let us start off with what we have studied in the previous class. I hope you remember what we have studied in the previous class. In the previous class we were studying the writing skill. So what writing skill did we see in the previous class? It was composition or essay writing. So basically in the class we spoke about the structure, what are the main components of essay writing and technically speaking the paragraphs and all, all those things we have spoken about. So we said about what are the important things we said there should be paragraphs or what is called the introduction, body and conclusion. These are the main things what we said there. What should be the introduction, what should be in the main part of the body and what should be in the conclusion. Generally we said the first paragraph is understood. It is taken as the introduction. Then what are things you should include, what should not be included and what comes in the main body, how it should be ordered. All these things has been said in the previous class. Now today we will move on to another aspect of this class. What is that? Opening paragraph. So now we said, the first paragraph is said, generally it is taken as introduction. If there is introduction, we said, we are introducing something. Just like if we see the introduction, maybe let us say in a program. We all try to make that introduction in such a way that that takes the focus of attention. They make sure that the introduction is given in such a way that it attracts the attention of the audience. And that is exactly what we need to do here also. The first paragraph, it should be perfectly written. Because that set the tone for the rest of the paragraph, rest of the things to come. If the introduction is very poorly written, the reader also will be reading with such a frame of mind. Therefore, the first paragraph has to be very important. Now, let us see the opening paragraph. The previous class I said about what is called topic sentence. What is meant by topic sentence? When we say about the topic sentence from the term itself it is coming, the topic. We are stressing on the topic what we are going to say in that composition. What is the topic? Now we frame a sentence in such a way that just reading through that sentence we are framing in the minds of the people what we are going to say or what is to come in the following paragraphs. So that is topic sentence. Now it is written here, the first sentence of the composition is very important. The first thing what I have written is, the first sentence, because that is setting the mind of the reader. Imagine a paragraph just starting with some cutting, cancellation. Generally, I say almost like the walk of a butcher. What do you call this butcher? Kasai or something. So, if you do something of that sort, literally it irritates. We call it first impression is the best impression, the lasting impression. So, just see, as soon as we take the paper, we see just cutting and. No, that should not be done. So, that should be the 
it is very important and take your time nobody is going to say anything take your sufficient time plan it nicely think properly then frame the sentence the first sentence opening sentence should be very very good no mistake no grammatical mistake no spelling mistake nothing should be there perfectly written sentence should be there it set the mood tells what it is going to be so what is the reason because it sets the mood sets the mind of the reader so that is very important even when we say about what is called students you get the teachers the first class when the teacher comes you see how this person is taking and from there you decide you judge okay this person is going to be like this whether i can play with that person or i can just try my own things so that is what we do because we observe from the first class and see okay this person is going to be like this that we do in every every day cases this is happening when we see a person we observe that person and make a final decision okay this is going to be like this in the same way when we are reading a composition seeing the first sentence or see reading the first paragraph we decide this essay is going to be like this so therefore keep in mind the first paragraph or first sentence should be perfectly written subject of the essay should be clear to the reader from the first paragraph the subject the topic what you are going to speak that should be very clearly mentioned not typically popping down the question from the question paper no the way in which you frame your sentence frame your paragraph from there it should be very clear what is it going to be what am i going to speak in this essay that should be very clearly mentioned in the first paragraph because that sets the mind of the person it should be as striking sentence make it as a theme sentence the first sentence we say again it is mentioned as striking sentence a attention taking sentence should be there a sentence that can take the mind of the reader sometimes in the class i used to say about maybe let's say about some of the hindi songs the catchy tune which we have got some of the songs we have got perfect tune we have got maybe the words and meanings and all those things maybe useless things but what matters is the tune that attracts the mind of the person very often we don't even listen to the words but listen to the tune the same way sentences what we are taking that sets the tone for us that decides whether the reader should read the entire composition or therefore when we are writing sentence should be perfect one in such a way it should set the mind of the reader it should be a striking sentence so keep in mind when we are framing the first paragraph opening paragraph anecdotes or question two things i have given here what do you mean by anecdotes what is that everybody can recall what is meant by anecdote anecdote may be as it is given in, it is a short account of an interesting humorous incident now when we are writing a composition there are different techniques by which we can start off maybe a small story maybe a short incident not a too long one okay make sure this this just for this is much or few more lines may be there only so much should be there There's something from where you can start off your answer quite often we can see uh, 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 orators or people when they are giving speeches they start off with such a story or incident that takes the attention of the entire crowd from there we will be able to convey what we have to say so that is an anecdote small incident a small story something of that sort there is a book called uh, the frog's prayer 
Spain's name, Frog Spain. Now I forget who is exactly the writer, but that prayer, uh, it is like this. The entire book is consisting of like this small, small incidents, uh, anecdotes, and all those things. Maybe a controversial book it was, but later on it is removed and the controversial and removed it is accepted. Now this kind of incident, lot of things are given there. Anecdotes from where you can start off your speech, your article, your composition, all those things. Therefore, it is a good method to start. I don't say that it has to be like that. No, I'm not speaking about the one and final thing that I will be speaking if I don't forget about what is called when we say we are only just saying ideas. Before I forget, I go on to that one. When we are writing composition, please make sure that we are not the final state. We are giving our opinions. We should not be making such a statements, such a remarks that we make, we are the final. So what I say apart from that is nothing. We are just putting our ideas. Therefore, when you are writing composition, please make sure that you don't make controversial remarks. Especially in the uh, what is called your answer papers and all those things when you are writing for examinations, please make sure don't do any controversial topic, topics there or statements. Let us not be a very serious critic there. We know that Indian culture, we pay attention to quite a lot of silly things. Let us, we may call it, I may call it as silly things, but we are capable of creating a lot of trouble with that. Maybe one is religion. In Indian situation, we see a lot of problems with religion. So therefore, let us not touch that area. Let us not criticize any religion, whatever be it. I have seen certain papers in which one the religion was just literally criticized. No, that should not be done. You are no one to such make a, such a uh, critic remarks because that can affect you very badly. Because we are all human beings when we are uh, evaluating papers and all those things. You happen to criticize my religion. Automatically, I may get hurt. My feelings may be affected. Therefore, that may make me to judge you wrongly. That may be the same for anyone else. Or another thing is our political parties. Let us not criticize any of the political parties. Just as I said, people have got religion. People have got their own religion. Sorry, political parties. You may be criticizing one. We don't know uh, who is going to correct our papers. They also will have what is called their own party. Maybe that person belongs to the party which you are criticizing. So therefore, you can be into get into trouble. Why to get into trouble? We are not politicians. Therefore, while writing composition, don't criticize political parties. Don't criticize religion. In no way we shall not make such kind of criticism. Just say my opinion. I feel it like this. In my opinion, it is like this. I feel it like this. So that does not hurt anything. So we shall not say, it is like this. It is, no. Please make sure that. Then, another way of studying this. Let's continue with that. What we have been speaking. A question. Start with a question. You can start your conversation with a question. Ask something. And then continue with that one. So that may be a, a good way of doing it. Just you can, what is called, get the attention of the people. Just imagine so many are sitting down there and you just ask a question, can you tell me what is happening here? You need not get an answer. But you just ask a question and you say, okay, I expect that you people do this one. So that is exactly that, asking a question. Just express your views. Ask a question as if you are waiting for a, an answer. And then proceed with that one. So that is another method you can follow for starting of your composition. 
order of narration order of narration how do you narrate your composition take order of importance now frankly speaking there is no proper order you can follow any of these things order of importance you may start with what is called the most important point first then lesser lesser and lesser least it goes like that or you can put it other way also arrange the points in order of importance that is what i said just now what i said so first one the most important one give priority to the important the first one then to the down one or opposite way also you can do it from the least one you put it from there you can just come up or as you reach the final stage you will see the most important point there okay that is also one way in which okay if the reader sees that final one okay this is a very important point and okay you, he gives the make the judgment from there okay, you will get good mark that is also one method or the other way so from god to specific it is usual to provide an overview or bright background information before going to details just give background details how whatever we are writing there should be a background so how does it this problem comes up uh, come up what was the situation leading to this present condition so just give a small background it should be small okay should not be the background should not be the entire thing and the main point that is often we see so no that should not be just a short description of what led to this present condition from there make your analysis your judgments and all those things chronological order maybe depending about the how things has happened there as the order has taken place maybe if you are writing something about a history so orderly you put it what happened at the first now and i said two ways i said maybe earliest thing to the latest one or latest to the earliest you can do but never make it confused to first you speak about what is happening present and then you go to the last one then between no that confuses the reader that should not be done therefore follow any one order cause and effects argument of an essay now this one is generally coming under what is called let's say the argumentative essay so cause and effect and also say what happens this one so you give if this happens like this this will be the result now if you take what is called the present lockdown situation and all those we may say oh if all the things are locked down and people stay at home we may not spread the virus like this or if you go out like this there is a chance of getting uh, disease for you so like that this is the cause and this will be the effect give the cause another one effect so that method also you can follow cause and effect argument of an essay my face a causal chain a series of events and the effect they produce so if this kind of process takes place what will be the result so that is another method you can follow so after proceeding from that now we have it so far what we said was that the structure how it should be opening paragraph how it should be what all the how we can start first we said an introduction then question cause and effect then we said what all chronological order order of importance all those things we said now moving from there next one what i have given is types of compositions types of compositions here i just put four of them here this is typically what i have taken for class here you will see in some this picture composition you may see about what is called uh, exposition or what is called a uh, reflective essay essay is that uh, requires a lot of contemplation thinking and that one i have removed from here that is not typically coming for us so here it is a picture composition what we have got we will be seeing what it is actually the real type of compositions there also we will see four so the real composition we have got descriptive argumentative and picture composition narrative from here these three words or these four words 
naturally they declare what type of composition it is narayi sundi something those things which we have seen which we have heard so we are narayi exactly what have the full details describing everything how it should be described what are the ways in which it has to be done so that becomes a descriptive argumentative maybe some of you are expert in that one arguing the people are expert in arguing be it reasonable or unreasonable am i right expert in arguing so it is not like this i knew this very often we see that one so today let us see how to argue ready okay so now which a composition you know what it is picture you are given a picture and from there you are supposed to write and make sure when you are writing the picture composition please make sure it is related to the picture here i shall not give the example or other we shall say there are incidents in which what is called uh, previously i am not uh, seen somebody uh, writing picture composition absolutely no connection meaning to say that the picture what was given and the description what is given there is no connection at all no that kind of things should not be the picture which was given was let's say is one of the question papers i am speaking about a person shaved a person is shaving and tap is kept open the water tap is kept open and person is shaving but one student has written such a description i have no idea what let him to get the such kind of idea of course at the end he gives one conclusion in which he narrates but he has described a story and he says they have gone to jammu and kashmir or something what is called uh, the famous shrine the vaishnavi devi there he has uh, reached there they have gone for tour and they have been walking and so many distant uh, traveled from probably up they have gone to jammu and all those things visited the shrine they spent a lot of time there then they came back and they stayed in a hotel and finally in the evening came for shaving no that little absurd it looks because most of the detail he has gone given for what is called this traveling and visiting the shrine and all that has nothing to do with it so such kind of description should not be there which a composition please make sure what exactly deals with that picture that has to be given you may be don't give such kind of wild imagination and all those things that may cause you to lose your marks since the 19th century english writers and teachers have been yapping with ways to classify forms and modes of writing after decades of struggle they ended up with four categories of writing that still make up the mainstream of composition so after a long time long times of discussion and all those things finally they came up with four sets of writing that is description narration exposition this is what i said reflective and all those things deep thinking and argumentation so these are actually the basic four type of composition which we are supposed to study a narrative composition now let's take what is a narrative composition a narrative composition consists of an event or a series of events an event or a series of events the narrator narration should be based on some incident about which you have some experience you are narrating we cannot narrate something when we don't have a proper information about that something if you have some experience so it is a composition consisting of event or a series of event maybe whatever may be narrating event whatever be the incident that has happened event that has taken place maybe a journey you are going somewhere in the previous class also i said if you are going for a journey your destination should be there depending upon the question what it is if you are asked to describe about the journey of okay, well and good otherwise you visited one particular place you have to describe about that place not what happened during the journey maybe one or two sentences some of the important things you can mention about what has happened but you have to reach the spot because most of the time is spent in that spot there not during the journey so therefore when you are narrating 
that has to be kept in mind. Creativity in narration. Be imaginative and convincing. Imagination should be there. Eliminate uninteresting incidents. Now when we say about imagination, whatever we are doing, if we have to catch the attention of the reader, we have to use imagination. Lot of imagination has to be there. Just speaking frankly about what is called a fact that has taken place, nobody is so much interested. Suppose if we if take example of let's say maybe a Hindi movie. What happens in a Hindi movie? How much fact do we see there? These are all just blown up ideas. Ideas we know that we still so seriously watch these things, but what is the reality? We know for certain that these things does not take place. These what all things what we are watching in the movie, they are not they are actually happening. These are only just imagination. Maybe let's say uh, some of the students say in the class South Indian movies, the hero is so powerful that one punch. Even the big buildings collapse. So that is only imagination. That has nothing to do with the reality. Reality we know that we, what he can do. So be imaginative. Maybe let's say when we say about the imaginative in the different ages in literature, like what is called the different ages, what we call it. Romantic age, Victorian age, Elizabethan age, like that different ages are there in English history. In English literature when we are speaking about what is called, uh, there is a stage uh, called uh, Romantic age. Now when we say about the Romantic age, the present day students, hmm, what is it Romantic? They think about only what is called Romance. Now from the words Romantic, meaning to say pleasing. Something pleasing to your eyes, pleasing to your ears. So typically in romantic age what they were doing is that they stressed on this one. Imagination. They gave 99 percentage to imagination and 1 percentage to the fact. So at that time just one small thing was sufficient for them to make up a new story, a poem or something. Just let's take example of what is called the Poems, what Varsavada is written. Varsavada is said because he is a nature poet. When he say about a nature poem, he has got such poems with very silly topics. Maybe let's take the poem Daffodils. He has just seen few flowers there and he has written a beautiful poem from them. Just that flower, we don't know how many flowers were there, but he says, at one glance I saw 10,000, 1,000 flowers. At glance, did he count? I don't know. No, that just, he has blown up the ideas, just exaggerated the ideas. So that is his imagination. And then from the same point, he has again has written another one poem, but it's called The Solitary Reaper. In that one also, Solitary Reaper, just one person bending down and doing the harvesting, cutting the grains. Just from there, he imagines or he brings up a poem, beautiful poem. And he says, the song which she was singing, we all are in the habit, no? when we are all alone, we go on singing. We are all become expert singers when no one is watching. Am I right? I too. It's a good singer, provided nobody should be there. So, this girl who was harvesting, at the same time she was singing. And he says, he could hear the song even after miles he had traveled. Or first he said, the entire valley was filled with her song, overflowing with the melody. And the most important thing he says, he didn't even understand the language of the girl who was singing. Some of the Scottish language she was singing. but. He didn't understand anything. Yet he says it was the best song. Even many years later, when he sits born, sitting at home, he could still hear the voice of the girl singing. So such was the imaginative power. 
that is what you should keep in mind use your imagination give 100% is freedom to the imaginative power of your then your narrative will become interesting just simply describing the fact that does not interest the reader set the scene and unfold the theme quickly set a theme for your conversation and unfold the theme very quickly and go keep the theme simple and the characters a few in number there should be a theme symbol should be there few characters should be there give more important and you then become one of the characters of that uh, story and so that it will become active so please keep that in mind when you are writing creativity should be there you should be imaginative set the scene and unfold the theme creating the atmosphere set up a suitable atmosphere for developing the theme so an atmosphere has to be there create an atmosphere how you can create the atmosphere and just see maybe with the as i said the first paragraph describe something catch the attention make certain certain statements that focuses the attention of the reader some controversial topics you take it controversial when i said the structure maybe let's say you are starting about uh, describing or something narrating in a person a beautiful pr- uh, princess was there but you describe her as a horribly good she was the princess was horribly good now when you take that sentence horribly good these two words go opposite horrible good then you will be interested to know what is going to come there so such a way you frame the sentences now here i have given an example of while watching the fence you may all uh, know from where this is taken while watching the fence is a story of tom sawyer a lazy boy so a boy when he was what is called he was given a punishment for while watching the fences so what did he do saturday morning has come and all the summer world was bright and fresh and brimming with life just beautiful saturday morning there was a song in every heart and if the heart was young the music is sure and the lips there was cheer in every face and a spring in every step this just a study just how that story was going to be developed this was just the beginning and how that story proceeded ahead so this is maybe one of the ways in which you can start off your answer order of events a narrative writing normally follows a chronological order that is the order in which the incident takes place so when we are giving this order of events the following expressions are commonly used in narrative writings maybe let's say this words are used here first second next finally at last consequently as a result at last soon immediately then afterwards after a few days etc these are the ways which you can use this order when we are giving first of all we started off our journey from here and second we reached the railway station and then just proceed depending upon the relation you go on use this words here so these words will give some order for you and make your narration somewhat interesting so please keep you can follow this it is not necessary that you have to do but some of these things will give credit your answer and the narrative composition deals with such subject as maybe this other subjects you can take a journey this already i have given a visit to a place of interest incidents such as festival marriage you are narrating all these things so this gives an ample topic for you descriptive composition now we will move on to the second or the next type of composition that is description describing something have an eye for details so when we are describing something just here use the entire details describing a person head to foot you have to describe that person now that i will be 
giving one example of how to describe a person. So that means to show that how you need to focus your attention on describing every detail in a such a way that you give the description that if you see that person later on you will have no doubt as to identify the person so that should be the method what you are following while describing something make a note of all what you see take down notes of everything all the points you take down maybe let us say yeah, you may watch or you may not watch what is called uh, cookery shows. So there they will give in each thing in detail. You take this one, you take that much. Even the quantity is said, you take this much, you take two leaves, two that one, two spoons of that one. So they just give you complete details that should be made. Describe the sound, smell, movement, etc. Now depending upon what you are describing. So if you are describing about the incident or accident or something, what happened there, then you may have to say all what happened there and what was the sound, how you got up from the sleep, maybe there because of that uh, drudging sound, what you heard, or maybe let's say something, smell what happened there, maybe something which happened there, what happened, incident was there, uh, gas leakage, then what happened, the reaction of the people, how making noise, the smell of the gas, and all those kind of things. That has to be in detail, it has to be there. The movements, how people are running from one place to another in desperation, all those things can be taken into consideration. Make use of contrast, compare something. Comparison of what is called example. Comparison of a scene by night and by day. You are describing maybe the, let's go, New York City. A city is being described there. So, you describe daytime how it looks like, at night how it looks like, a comparison is made there, a contrast is made there. So, that may be another method of doing that. So, that could be a one method. Uh, write a description at an entirely fanciful level, relying on vivid imagination uh, rather than on facts. Back to romantic age once again, what is called? And at the fanciful level, just send your imagination. Of course, depending upon what you are describing, okay? So don't, if you are uh, describing some real incident, like maybe accident or something, don't use your imagination there. There, factual description has to be there. Here, normal condition when you are taking imagination, give full freedom to your imagination. Just describe all those things. Vivid imagination, very clear. Just as if uh, right in front of you, you are describing some of the scenes may be taking place. Just imagine what is happening there, the scenery. So these are the ways in which you can describe description of a person as I said here. So just introduction about introducing the person, then it may consist of the name of the person and your relationship with it. Just describe, I am going to introduce such and such a person to you. Now, body of the composition, what should be there? Physical features, physical features of that person. Height, looks, body shape, structure, when you are a small person, when you are a huge person when you are describing. So just describe the entire physical features should be there. So that if you see that person, it is very clear right in front of you, that person, you understand, okay, this is going to be the person. So clothing, <coughs> we people have got certain habits of dressing, dressing pattern we have got. So what is the particular dressing habit of that person? Posture. When you speak about the postures, let's say postures and uh, gestures, I will put it together, I have not put that, gestures. Mannerisms. These are all what is called when we describe a person. Uh, what is called these things comes first. If you just recall about your teachers and all those things, what are the different mannerisms they may have, or what are things we people, if when I am taking the classes, different mannerisms, my movements, maybe full time just moving from 
not steadily standing my gestures the movement of my hands that is gestures maybe mannerism we have got what is called all the people have got different type of mannerism maybe just adjusting this one just using maybe using the words like uh, okay so like that words are there so these things also you can use it clothing posture speech mannerisms okay mannerism i have mentioned here <coughs> life history then interest family background this opinion and actions all these details has to be taken what others say about him what is your opinion about that person so all these things can be very clearly given there when we are describing a person moving from there we have got what is called argumentative proposition as the topic says arguing arguing and counter arguing argumentative proposition is the art of forming reasons making inductions drawing conclusions and applying them to the topic in discussion so it is arguing about something giving your opinion based on a controversial topic maybe a topic a heated discussion may be there you are cool that is most important thing when you are giving argument argument does not mean that you hurt the feelings of other person no you have to argue what is called without hurting the feelings of the other what is called disagree agreeably this is the statement point often i use disagree agreeably you say something in such a way that you does not hurt the feelings of other person at the same time you make that person convince that what that person says is not the correct thing what i say is the correct thing but at the same time nobody has got any feeling so that should be very seriously kept in mind so framing or forming reasons making induction making conclusion based on some incident you draw a conclusion it uses the process of reasoning from the known to the unknown known to the unknown we are going to conclude if this things happens this will be the conclusion this is going to be therefore this thing should not be done i strongly oppose this one this type of words also should be used there i strongly oppose i clearly say that if this things happens it cannot be done or i strongly support the view it is one in which the writer arrives at conclusion through reasoning reasoning logical reasoning we see certain incidents from there we make conclusion we see what is called a logical conclusion we call it as a logical based on some reasons we come to the final conclusion so that is typically what we are doing in the argumentative essays the ability to take account of objections and to make your way through them towards considered position the ability oppositions will be there at the same time remain cool and argue you go ahead with your opinion that is important you are required to put forward your ideas and opinion on a controversial subject it should be properly planned <coughs> decide what to say in conclusion that is one of the most important thing argumentative is say you should know the conclusion finally what am i going to say what is my point i am going to oppose or i am going to support the view my conclusion is there this is going to be my conclusion now if i have to reach to that conclusion first of all my conclusion should be there already framed then rest of the argument should come based on that one and finally make the conclusion because of all these 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 arguments finally i come to this conclusion that should be not just at the end you go for a conclusion no decide what to say in conclusion first already you have to decide the conclusion and then plan your arguments consistently leading up to the conclusion so based on the conclusion you have to make the arguments this is quite straight for us generally we give the arguments based on the argument you make the conclusion but here conclusion is already set in your mind because you are opposing or supporting one controversial topic so you have to come to the conclusion based you know what is going to be the conclusion in your mind so 
that should be kept in mind decide what you want your reader to believe okay that is another thing decide what you want the reader to believe this is something very important maybe like again i may have to go back to what is called one of the dramas of julius caesar the task which was right in front of brutus or mark antony this two after the death of julius caesar mark antony when he comes to give a speech he had a very difficult situation in which every crowd was against him now he had to speak in such a way that he has turned all the friends of caesar as his enemies so he has to plan in such a way that how you can turn the people that is decide what you want your reader to believe make for and against this this is when you write an exam let's not do it because most of the time you will be asked either for or against now if you are asked to write make your judgment for both for and against you may fill in both otherwise read the question very clearly and decide what is to be done state your chosen view points simply at the beginning give evidence to support your case not enough to simply say views it has to be supported with clear proof that is the most important thing you have to keep proof based on these things i say use paragraph to make your points clear so each point should be a paragraph use persuasive phrases such as thus it is evident i strongly oppose these are what we, uh, what is called uh, the words showing your arguments i strongly oppose i strongly support the view i am in favor of this one thus it is evident therefore it is very clear that this thing should not be done so such kind of phrases should be used there to show that you disagree or agree presentation of adequate arguments the ability to see both the sides of the argument you should beforehand if you are in a real live debate you should be if you are arguing for then you should know what is against us you should know what your opponents may be going to say you have to contradict that and already and say my opponents may say this one therefore i already i say that that is not exactly for see what the opponents may be going to say the ability to present forcefully clear conclusion <coughs> even the previous class i may have made observed when you are giving this kind of argumentative essays only one thing should be there in your mind what i say is the final thing today what i am going to contradict what i said in the essay when i said you should not write what is called you should not be the decision maker but that is apart from that one, this is a debate when you are giving the debate uh, statement what you say should be the final i strongly say this is the only thing should be done because this is our argument so prove us with that it has to forcefully it has to be said one and only thing only what i say is the correct thing that should be the statement even if you know that what you are going to say is uh, what is called factually wrong but you are you have to speak it strongly that it is the only correct take clear stand if you are asked to write for or against the clear stand don't be on the fence i can go this side or i can go this side no no stand on one place have a clear cut point i am for or i am against it has to be clearly mentioned also especially in the in terms of what is called your writing answers for exam and all those very clearly has to be stated i am for or against that is important otherwise you will lose one don't write both for and against unless it is asked these are all serious issues has to be kept in mind picture composition a story based on the picture so you know what is that you can write a story also based on the picture you may write it should have a basic plot characters an atmosphere and a climax if you are writing a picture composition this make sure of course picture composition if you are paying attention it is very easy for you because this is your idea 
picture composition what all things you see from the picture so therefore for scoring purpose it is good but this many things should be there a basic plot should be there character should be there an atmosphere should be created and a climax should be there this many things should be given invent them on the basis of the theme of the picture make sure based on the picture this thing should be said you can become one of the characters in the picture you can become one of the characters there show your interaction with other characters so how the conversation that takes place description based on picture describing something mere description is not acceptable just simply okay one person is sitting down one boy is sitting down there no that kind of description is not what we are asking typically say what it is maybe market place and with a description it has to be there pay attention to details such as facial expression gestures clothes postures etc pay attention to that one. imagine that some of the very detail minute details may be there all may not pay attention to that those kind of points should be taken out gestures different gestures used there the clothes what they are wearing all those things should be paid attention to <coughs> begin your description by concentrating on the details given in the picture details concentration should be given first on the details of the picture what is given there establish interesting connections between the details chosen by you and the picture as well the details what you have chosen what you are going to write there now make the connection between that picture and the idea what you are going to frame and finally there should be a logical conclusion the conclusion should be there a proper conclusion there whatever you are saying there should be a proper conclusion should be there write it clearly why did you make this kind of analysis or study or how did you make a story of that one so this is so far what we have said is about different type of compositions basically what we said let's go by picture composition then we description argumentative narrative composition then we said opening paragraph should be there how the opening paragraph can be framed properly the type of sentences the topic sentences can be there or what are the different ways in which you can make which you can make uh, your composition an interesting one so i hope all these things are clear to you so please make sure that these things are taken clearly and in the next class i may give you some homework for uh, writing composition based on all the details what we have said you may have to complete the composition and please keep in mind this one i thought for the day for you beauty is not in the face beauty is a light in the heart hope you have understood all what we have said today and put into practice all what you have heard today and revise uh, write down these things in your copy so that later on you can revise whenever you want this will be the same procedure what will be following in uh, what you have probably followed in class 9 class 10 class 11 class 12 all these things so all these classes it will be required for you therefore i honestly uh, request you keep all these things in your copy revise every now and then and put into practice have a nice day